Okay, this is what you need to make a stove. It's not quite the one that I showed yesterday because the inside can of my yesterday's stove is too hard to make. Okay, I just put yesterday's stove in the picture. It's not really too hard to make. It's too hard to find the can. So with that armor can you see there, behind the sausage, you strip the very top lip off of that stove until you come up with something that looks like this little lip. Now that top lip is crimped on the stove so it takes the pocket knife and the pair of pliers to uh, to remove that. It's kind of delicate. You have to figure out how to do it. Then once you get the lip stripped off, you cut it with a hacksaw in the two pieces right there. I got the nice grooves so it's pretty easy to follow the line and make it then you cut out of the what top piece that you have left, you cut this out with a pair of scissors and trim it until it fits into this can very nicely. Then you put holes in the rim of this thing like that above every three-eighths of an inch around the edge. And when you get to the other side, around the back where you started, so then you fit this thing in here. It's kind of a problem to do, but not impossible. There it is. It's below the rim. And now you fit it to where the sides are even. So anyway, when you're done with this, you got that inside thing, inside can, pushed down to the bottom where it looks pretty even all the way around. That radius there forces the bottom of your split together. And now it's time to trim off this upper edge to where it's about a 32nd of an inch above that line so that you can fold it over and hold that inside cup, inside can, in there. So with scissors you can cut that can down to the level that you want it.
so I'll trim that up a little closer. This level here is about the level that you're really looking for. Then you just fold that top over. Put a screwdriver. Put anything you got. So here's the stove with the rim folded over, little holes inside, and this is the ring that limits the, the simmer ring. It goes on there. That's a good cup plus worth of water for coffee. Probably enough to do top ramen. There the stove is lit. And you may see it start to burn out of those holes pretty soon. That's a pretty good burn right now. I don't know if I'll be able to get this simmer ring on it. The stove's a little taller than the last one. So I'll try putting that simmer ring on again. See what happens. Yeah, it cuts down on the amount of fire. You take it off, you get more fire, you put it on, you get less fire. That way, you can extend the burn. I wouldn't be surprised that I couldn't burn this for 40 minutes because it's a little taller and will hold a little more fuel. And but it still gets to be maybe three ounces of fuel to burn 40 minutes. That would be probably a dollar's worth of fuel. You notice that the simmer ring has caused the fire to go down quite a bit. What these stoves do is they have an operating temperature and at such and such a temperature they produce so much fumes. So when you first put the simmer ring on, <coughs> the fires, the stove is hotter than it will be with the simmer ring on for a minute or so. But it seeks an equilibrium, and that 
particular fire will go on until it runs out of fuel. So anyway, after a while, you take the lid off and you see that you got boiling, boiling activity in there. Everything makes a big difference with a small fire if you don't have a lid on it.